Disclaimer, this video is based on my personal experiences with my first international trip. Your experiences may vary depending on where you're coming from or going to. Please be sure to follow all international laws and thoroughly research your destination. Hi guys, I've just come back from my very first international trip and wanted to share with you guys some of the experiences I had and what I'd do differently if I could. Whether you're traveling out of your home country for the first time or the fifth, this video will have some tips and tricks for you that you can hopefully use along the way. So I traveled from the United States to New Zealand to see friends in Auckland. This trip was a bit up in the air as I was to arrive on May 2nd, the very day that New Zealand opened its borders for visa waiver travelers. The reason for the hurry to get there was due to my job in hospitality. If I'd waited any longer to go, I wouldn't have been able to until after the busy season. Nonetheless, this brings me to my first tip. As countries change their border policies due to the virus or other factors, ensure that your flight is cancelable or at the very least changeable. Refundable flights are much more expensive than changeable flights, but if the country you're planning to visit fluctuates their opening dates frequently, it may be a better idea to get a refundable flight if you're able. Be sure to shop around flights to see what refund and change policies are available. The flight I took was with United and Air New Zealand and there was no change fee for the flight should I have had to change dates, but Luckily, I didn't have to. Also, buy early. International flights get increasingly expensive the longer you wait, and you're more likely to get stuck with a longer flight or layover the longer you wait till you plan dates. Second, if you plan to leave your car at the airport, pay for your parking ahead of time. Check your airport's website, as they often offer discounts on pay-ahead parking, and it'll be much easier getting through the gate. Third, don't assume your plane has Wi-Fi. While I was happy to put on movies provided by the airline anyways, it still would have been nice to have a way to be in contact with friends and family over a 12 hour flight, but that wasn't an option as the Wi-Fi on Air New Zealand either didn't function or wasn't available. If you use something like Spotify Premium, you can download music podcasts to your devices for offline listening. In short, just be sure you have a backup way to entertain yourself that doesn't involve social media or chill with movies like I did for most of it. If you're not, Airlines actually has some really good modern titles available on international flights. Fourth, make sure you pack your carry-on with enough outfits for a couple of days, spare toiletries, and shoes, just in case your luggage gets lost for any reason. Some airlines may require that you check your carry-on, but try to keep it with you whenever possible. I only had to check my carry-on on my domestic flight back home as it was a much smaller aircraft. Double check your airline's sizing requirements to ensure your bag is small enough to carry on. This will also help reduce the weight of your check baggage, which will also save you money. Fifth is to make sure you have your passport up to date. In the US, passports have an expiration date of 10 years from issue, but some countries will require your passport to be valid six months from the date of your trip. If you need to renew, give yourself plenty of time to do so, especially now that international travel is more widely acceptable again. Sixth, make sure you have all paperwork in place before you leave and keep it in a folder in your personal item bag. This may include any customs forms you need to fill out to return home as well. Check your destination country's immigration or government site for more information on what to fill out or if you've already bought your flight, many airline companies will give you information on exactly what you need. Most countries will also require you to have a supervised COVID test between 24 and 48 hours before your flight, so make sure to get the negative result from the clinic you go to. This may also include for the flight back as well, so ensure you know where you can get a supervised COVID test and the required paperwork in order to come home. Seventh, be doubly sure to check your destination country's custom rules to make sure you're not bringing anything that will cause you trouble in the long run. For example, a random New Zealand type of contraband item is honey, and not just you know plain honey in a jar, but anything with honey in it. According to New Zealand's Ministry for Primary Industries, honey brought in from outside New Zealand can bring in harmful pests and diseases that affect native bee populations. And of course, make sure to check your home country's custom rules as well so you don't accidentally bring back something that's contraband or make arrangements to ship it home ahead of time. Eighth, see if there's anything you can do to make your customs clearance easier. While New Zealand's customs took me very little time at all to get through, at LAX the custom lines were stupid long, so they suggested downloading an app onto your phone to put in passport and declaration information ahead of time to clear yourself through faster. This can be a lifesaver if you have a connecting flight and still need to send your baggage through yourself, or have no idea where your terminal is. 
and at LAX my terminal was at the opposite side of the concourse and I had to walk to it. Fun! Finally, notify your bank and credit card companies that you will be in another country and when, so your card isn't frozen. Um, however, don't assume your cards will work everywhere either. Neither my Visa nor the Discover card worked in the places I attempted to use them in New Zealand, so I highly suggest withdrawing some cash and having it exchanged for your destination's currency, or if you're traveling to visit somebody, see if it's possible to work out a way to send money to them for expenses. I was visiting um, someone called Bridgeburner, um, and we know each other, so we just ended up PayPaling to um, cover expenses. Although, be careful doing PayPal as that will charge a fee. While there's a lot of minutia I could further discuss with international travel, these are the biggest lessons I learned when I went on my first international trip. Overall, it was luckily a very smooth trip coming and going, with little issues other than some little hitches and delays. Staying organized is a big part of ensuring everything goes smoothly and you can spend more time on your trip having fun. As always, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you can catch my videos as soon as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!